Hey everyone, Brady from TextureLabs.org here with a tutorial on destroying your typography in Photoshop. We'll check out how to get this pretty heavy but still natural looking distress. It's totally adjustable and what's really cool is that it keeps your type completely live. So you can actually scrub through fonts and kind of distress them in real time. And it's actually a fairly simple setup. This could have been just a two minute video to replicate one specific look, but I wanted to take an extra minute to explain how it works because it's kind of an unusual approach in Photoshop that gives you a ton of control over how things look and really makes a nice jumping off point to experiment with. Let's get into Photoshop and check out how it works. All right, well, I've got a piece of type here ready to destroy, and I put it over kind of a random background so we can see how this works with transparency. And to get started, I'm actually gonna quickly create a pattern, and I'm gonna do that in a new document. I think this will be a really useful pattern to have in your toolkit in general. I'm gonna make this document a very specific size, 1024 by 1024 pixels. Everything else here is pretty much at its default. I'll hit Create. Then I'm gonna hit D to set my colors to default black and white, and use the render clouds filter. So any of the more technically minded people out there will have noticed that this document size 1024 by 1024 is a power of two. And when you use the render clouds filter on a canvas that's one of these magic number sizes, it'll create this cloudy noise in a way that is actually seamless. Meaning if I go to edit define pattern, now I have a seamless clouds pattern I can use at any time. All right, we're gonna use that pattern later. Let's get back to the main document. And this is another one of those effects that really crush the values and can start to show some aliasing or kind of those pixelated crunchy edges at a lower resolution. So I'm gonna be working at a fairly high resolution, 3840 by 2160. And to get started, even though this type is yellow, I'm gonna to wanna to make it white. The way this effect works is that first we destroy the shapes and then add the color in. Then I'm gonna double click on the text layer to open up the layer styles panel and I'm gonna apply two effects. The first thing I'll use is the inner glow effect, but I'm actually gonna invert some of these values. I'm gonna change the color from white to black, the blend mode from screen to multiply, and I'm gonna switch this source option from edge to center. I'll bring up the size a little bit, maybe to 35 pixels, and I'm just looking for kind of a soft shadow in the middle of the letters. Ultimately, the way this effect is gonna work is that the darker any of these areas are, the more prone they will be to get distressed and kind of worn away to be transparent. That'll probably make a little bit more sense in a minute. I'm gonna add one more effect. I'm gonna use the stroke effect and I'll get a little bit more detailed with this effect. I'm gonna reset it to default. Then I'm gonna bring up the size to maybe about 50. I'll change the position to center. Then the fill type, I'm gonna to switch to gradient. And in the gradient style, I'm gonna set it to shape burst. And there's one problem here. You can see this weird edge where the stroke and the inner glow effects don't really play nicely together. To fix that, first I'm gonna click to turn on this little overprint box. Then I'm clicking on the gradient itself to edit it. And these values on the bottom are the colors of the gradient, which I'll leave alone. These boxes on the top are the opacity of the different areas of the gradient. What I'm gonna do is slide the bottom one up to the 50% mark. Then I'm gonna click on the top one change that to 0% opacity and drag it down to about the 65% mark. So you can see that kind of blended those two effects together. It made the gradient stroke get transparent as it moved toward the white areas or kind of toward the center. All right, that's it for the effects. I'm gonna hit okay. Next, I need to create one layer on top of this text and one layer below it. The one below it just needs to be solid black. So to keep it simple, I can go into the menu down here and just create a solid color layer. I'll make that black. Then the layer on top is what's gonna drive this whole effect. So I'm gonna take just an extra second here to illustrate how it works. Take a look at what happens if I put a threshold adjustment layer up here. Kind of interesting that you actually end up right back where you started. And if I drag the threshold up or down, it basically picks up more of that stroke effect and pushes the edges out, or in the other direction pushes the edges in and starts to pick up on those inner shadows. All right, then check this out. Instead of a threshold adjustment, I'm gonna create a new layer and fill this with 50% gray. Then I'm gonna set the layer blend mode to hard mix. Now the hard mix blend mode is like my number one secret weapon in Photoshop. When you're working specifically with gray values, hard mix works exactly the same as a threshold. And if I make the gray lighter or darker, it's exactly the same thing as using that slider on the threshold. 
So why is that useful? Well, it means that if this layer isn't just a solid gray, but has all kinds of different gray values, it's going to create a threshold that has all kinds of variation in it. So you'll see what I mean if I take this layer and use that render clouds filter again. You immediately get this really interesting effect. And I'm hoping it kind of makes sense how this is working. The hard mix blending mode is turning this layer into kind of a threshold adjustment but the light and dark areas of the layer are kind of randomizing how much black and white comes through from the layers underneath. As you start to wrap your head around it, this can be a really versatile concept. This blending mode trick is actually the main engine behind the engraving tutorial I did, the magic smoke text effect. I have this halftone effect, which is a tutorial I haven't gotten to yet, but I will, so be sure to subscribe. Because the thing is, this doesn't necessarily have to be a clouds layer. It could be any layer with black and white and gray values. So just as an example, if I fill this layer with 50% gray again, and that kind of resets it, check out how this looks if I use this filter in the filter gallery, the halftone filter, and I set it to circles. Totally different effect. And this layer doesn't have to be something you create in Photoshop. It can be a grayscale texture pasted on top and set to hard mix. The key is just that you want this layer to be grayscale and you want it to have not just black and white, but a nice variety of gray values to kind of push things around. Anyways, I hope that's all worth thinking about, but let's get back on course here with the distressed text. And what I'm going to do here is create a pattern layer and I'll fill the pattern layer with the clouds pattern that we created at the beginning of the video. And the benefit of using this as a pattern is that we can adjust the scale of it. So I'm going to set this layer to hard mix. Then I can double click to open it back up. And as you can see, if I change the scale here, it kind of changes the amount of detail in the distressed areas. So for smaller type, you might want a smaller scale. For this huge piece of type, I'm going to leave that at about 80%. All right, on to the next step, which is getting a transparent background instead of the black background. I'm going to do that in two quick steps. First, I'm going to create a clipping mask by holding the Option key or the Alt key if you're using Windows, and I'm going to click in between the solid black and the type layer. Then same thing, clicking in between the type layer and the clouds pattern. And now all three of these layers will be controlled by the blending options of this solid black layer on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is double click on the solid black layer to bring up the layer style panel. And I'm going to go down here to the blend if options. And all I'm going to do is drag this first slider, the this layer black slider, up just a little bit. The only values here are black and white, so anything above zero is going to make all the black areas transparent. All right, additionally what I can do is use the layer mask of this solid black layer to add some distress the old fashioned way, just by adding a little bit of texture into the layer mask. So I'm going to open up kind of a light grunge texture. This is a brand new texture from the texturelabs.org site where everything is free. I'm going to select all and copy this. Then to get it into the layer mask, I'm going to hold the option or the alt key and click on the mask thumbnail. Then I can paste that texture in and I'm actually going to invert that. So I just get a few darker details. All right, I'll click back out of mask view mode, but maybe I'm going to select that mask again and use a levels adjustment and just kind of crush the blacks and make the mask a little bit more dramatic. All right, well, the final piece of the puzzle to bring some color back into this, there are probably a few ways to go about this, but I think the easiest is just to hold shift and select these three layers and drag them into a group folder. And that kind of flattens them into a single object. And then on this group folder, I can use the color overlay effect, which is obviously just a very simple way to introduce some color, or you could make the text black or whatever you want. All right, so as heavily distressed as this type is now, it's actually still completely live. So you don't have to imagine what a font or a piece of type would look like if you distress it. You can just kind of experiment with things in real time. Of course, you can always double click on the stroke effect and adjust how crazy you want the edges or adjust that inner glow effect and that'll determine how destroyed kind of the inside of the shapes are. Well, I've still got this nice grunge texture in my clipboard. I'm gonna paste that on top and set it to screen mode just because I like this texture. And that wraps it up. All right, well, I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. If so, please do hit the like button and be sure to check out the channel for more content. Thank you to the texturelabs.org Patreon supporters and thank you for watching. I will see you next time.